Hi friends, we continue our study of the Gospel Sync. That's all four Gospels in one single narrative. And I put a link to a document in the video's description below so that you can follow along. And we were in Luke 1, verses 25 to 38, and now we're moving on to Luke 1, 39 through 56. So we're going to have Deb read for us, and then we'll jump right in. In those days, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judah, where she entered the home of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud voice, and, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord's word to her will be fulfilled. So the first key disciple-making lesson comes from verses 39 through 40. And we see the power of the relational network. Elizabeth is Mary's relative, and they're having miraculous conceptions going on at the same time. And so one of the things that we see here is how God works through relational networks. In the New Testament Greek, it's called oikos. Basically, it's just the household or the relational network, not just family, but all friends, family, co-workers, associates. So here we have the case of Mary and Elizabeth being related, and they're going to have a baby. Now, it's very interesting that Mary would make the trek from Nazareth to the hill country. Now, I wanted to demonstrate how much trouble Mary went to in order to just see Elizabeth. That, that was a long walk. I mean, she could have rode a camel or a docking, but because they were probably poor, she probably just walked. And it was a several day journey, probably three, three or four days journey down to see Elizabeth. But that shows you the commitment level of people in a relational network. And God uses those kind of commitment levels, those kind of relational bonds in order to advance his kingdom. I remember in a two-year time frame, my dad, myself, and my youngest brother all came to Christ. And it was because our stepmother's mother, we called her Grandma Marge, she was praying for us. And first thing is never underestimate the prayer of a grandmother. I think that's the most powerful weapon on the planet. So, but the other thing is that relational network through a stepmother's mother, uh, three people came to Christ because she was praying and she was sharing the gospel with us. So, that's the power of the relational network. And hang on, because we're going to see this again in Jesus' ministry in an even greater way. All right, so the second disciple maker's lesson is, once again, we see someone being filled with the Holy Spirit. In verse 41, Elizabeth is filled with the Spirit when Mary comes into her presence. And I just want to point out that, uh, again, filling of the Spirit happened before the promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit that Jesus talks about, and that happened in Acts 1, but or I'm sorry, Acts 2. But... What we see here is that filling can be before the baptism of the Holy Spirit, before 
water baptism. It can be during and it can be after. It can be continuous. It can be spontaneous and it can happen in various events. So the filling of the Spirit is completely different but very closely associated with the baptism of the Holy Spirit for us as believers. And so I wanted to point that out so that we would make a distinction between filling and baptism. Now, a good example of filling happening at different times is when Paul was converted and he was baptized. Just before he was baptized, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, Acts 9, 17. And then we see later on when they're on their first missionary journey and there's this guy that's giving them resistance as they're talking to a proconsul that's very interested in the gospel. Paul is filled with not only indignation, but the Holy Spirit, and he does a miracle. It's kind of an anti-miracle. The guy is blinded, you know. But he was filled with the Spirit once again. So we see examples in the scriptures where people are filled with the Spirit at different times. So I just wanted to make sure we see that this can happen at various times. In fact, one of the things that I pray almost every day is that God will fill me with his Spirit. Now, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I can see throughout Scripture that even if you're baptized in the Spirit, that there is certain occasions where you're filled with the Spirit to do special works of God or even just worship Him. And I love what Jesus says when He's talking about prayer and the fact that God is faithful. He answers prayer. And he makes the comparison to a father and a child. If the child asks for good things, the father's not going to give him bad things. But here's the punchline. Let me read for you down here in Luke eleven thirteen. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I'm going to take Jesus at his word, and I'm going to ask for the filling of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Quite frankly, I've tried to do this on my own. Live the Christian life, make disciples, glorify God, And I'm convinced that I cannot. And that's why I'm praying every single day to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, we've talked about filling, and I mentioned to you, I have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? We'll get there. All right, let's move on to the next portion of Scripture. Deb is going to read for us, and then we'll talk about it. Then Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty-handed. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. So our third disciple maker lesson for today is that praising God is a high valued activity. 
it's very interesting when you talk about worship and we talk about praise and a lot of times it seems plastic it seems artificial or manufactured not with mary mary breaks out into this wonderful praise that she's just talking about who she is and who god is and what god has done and it's a result of what god is doing in her life it's not scheduled it's it's not fabricated it's uh, i kind of don't like this word but it's very organic you know it's it just happens because she is really in touch with what god is doing in her life so how does mary praise god well she praises God by magnifying, by rejoicing, by acknowledging his provision, submitting to his will as his servant, and reflects on her heritage. What will be the spiritual lineage that she will leave behind? And so she just breaks into praise on, you know, what, God is doing in her life. Now she talks about what God is doing. God is saving. He's looking with favor. He calls her blessed. He's done great things. He humbles the proud but exalts the humble. He provides for the poor but he makes the rich dependent. He is a helper. He is merciful and he keeps his promises. So that's what God did. That's kind of his purpose like we were talking in the last video. But who is God? What's his identity? Mary goes on about this. She says that God is the Lord. God is God. He's the Savior, mighty, great, holy, forgiver, eternal, just, a rescuer, and he is faithful. Mary breaks out and prays and talks about where she's at, what God's done, and who God is. And I think that's a great recipe for us just to reflect on those three things. Uh, The other day I was... uh, discipling a young guy and uh, I all of a sudden I realized that uh, we forgot to pray before we even started this. I love to invite Jesus into these discipleship relationships because I want to acknowledge that he's right there with us. And as I was thinking about that, and, okay, we need to go back and pray, but I was thinking, we're inviting him into our presence, where would he sit? Well, the remote control for the TV is in that chair, and the cat is over in that chair. And then as I was thinking about that, all of a sudden I was like, Jesus doesn't need a chair. He'll bring his own chair. He'll bring the throne of God, you know. And and all of a sudden there's there was this spontaneous uh, need to worship Jesus for who he is and what he has done. So that particular prayer time was pretty sweet, just reflecting on who Jesus is and what he has done. So it's time for some action plans. So the first thing, Helping disciples tap into the power of relational networks. Do I need to work on that? Do I need to help somebody that I'm discipling to reflect on, hey, you have an oikos, a relational network. How are you doing with sharing the gospel with them and discipling them and helping them tap into their relational network as well? Instructing and modeling what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Understanding what that means 
and then helping them understand and operate in the filling of the Holy Spirit. That's our job as disciple makers. And then lastly, promoting authentic praise of God as a high-valued activity. It's not just something I do in a congregation for one hour on Sunday morning. It's something that my life should be full of, and it's part of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. So pick one of these three, write it down, put it in a prominent place where you can reflect and be doers of the word and not merely hearers of the word. All right, that's all the time that we have for today. Until we get together next time, keep making disciples for Jesus.